Hello. Sorry, I was just having a little drink then. <laughs> a little bit of a drink. It's Sunday. It's either morning or afternoon somewhere. But it's evening here in the UK. I hope you've all had a lovely weekend. Oh dear. Right. Where do we start? Right. Come and say hello. If you're on YouTube, pop in and say hi. Right, so I've had a busy weekend. I've had my grandson Friday. Well, I've had him all weekend. Friday and Saturday night. Till today. And then yesterday I picked my grand granddaughter up. So I had her last night. And I swear to God, she's three years old. But I was only joking to today, it's like, they're saying something to her, like, you've got to go home today. Well, I said, oh, no, 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 you can take that one. Take the little one. You can leave the other one. You can leave the grandson. She's more hard work. She's more hard work than what my grandson was at that age. I swear to God. She's on, she, like, I've got two grandkids who are on the go 24-7. Well, I say 24-7. At least my granddaughter will go to bed, like, say, half seven, eight o'clock. She went to bed about eight-ish, eight o'clock-ish like, last night. And she'll sleep all night. All night in her own bed. My grandson, he's another thing. He'll start off in my bed. Then he'll go to his bed. And I think, whoa, I've got the bed to myself tonight. Yes, yes. I literally get in bed and I'm in bed about half an hour. Just dozing off and I hear the creaking of the floorboards by the door. And I know it's him. So he gets in the bed and I think, oh, God. There's me thinking I'd have my bed to myself tonight. Nope, not happening. So... I got some sleep. I do get some sleep with him, I must admit. And then you know when you get that feeling someone's watching you, watching you. Right? Well I'm lying there in bed and I had this feeling someone was in the room. Well it wasn't actually in the room. They was by the bedroom door just staring at me. Hi, Dippy Bird. Oh, I've had a good <laughs> Busy, hectic, tiring day, weekend, right? Anyway, so I've looked up, and I don't know why, but I always jump. I always go, like, oh, sugar, right? And he says, my granddaughter's standing there. So I said, come on, in you come. It was way too early to be getting up, way too early for me. So she gets up, and I goes, she just tried to go back to sleep for a bit. She's lying there so quietly. And my grandson said, I'm going in my bed. I went, okay, bye. Then he comes in about 10 minutes later. Here's your teddy for Olivia. I thought, you know what? I'm not going to get any more sleep. These two are wide awake. I don't know what, I didn't even look at the time as to what time I was up this morning. I don't know. Was it light? I don't know. I don't even know if, if, if it was light or still dark. You like in the background, are you? Oh, I'm glad you like the background. I've got several. I keep into. I interchange them every so often. When I get bored of one, I put another one on. <laughs> so, as I said, I'm. I was functioning on coffee, and coffee alone. But like I said earlier to someone, I said after the went home tonight, I finally got home to having a cup of coffee. And it was a hot, well, warm cup of coffee instead of a stone cold coffee. Because all weekend, every time I've made a coffee, my grandson's even needed me. I've had to do something for him. And by the time I've sorted all that out, my coffee's gone cold. Right? And the same when I've got my granddaughter. Hi, MCAS. So. 
Yeah, I like to change it around a little bit. Every so often I change my background around. So, as I said, I'm, I've got Coca-Cola at the moment, so I'm drinking that. That should keep me awake for a bit. Looks like me with men. <laughs> Dippy! It's a good job this isn't over 18s only. Anyway. I'll just put some of these up. See what I have to deal with when I've got Dippy in here. When she comes in my chat, my chat goes downhill. Right, anyway, I don't know if you've all seen the interview with Tony. You're okay, Dippy Bird, I don't mind. I can't go, I, I like it in a way because it gives, it gives us a bit of a giggle. Right, so apparently, well, not apparently, um, BHB. If you know what that stands for, did an interview with Tony. Tell me about, t you, yeah, you are. You are naughty. Right? Naughty, naughty. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so she's done this interview. Now, some people may not like BHB. And you, you know what I'm on, on about, right? But I've only really got to know, um, yeah, 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 him, him, and I'll say Bullhorn Betty, right? I like Bull, Bullhorn Betty, and I'll tell you why, because she is for Sebastian, right? She she works on facts. She checks everything she hears. Okay, she's probably had a bit of a past before on YouTube with other cases. I don't know. I'm not going to judge anyone on that. Right? But I like Bullhorn Betty. She is a bit of a laugh as well when you go and watch her. And she don't do long shows i think the longest she's ever done was what i think an hour normally it's like 20 30 minutes so she gets what she has to say to the point sticking to the facts and to the point within that time which i like some people don't like her well that's that's everyone's choice you know what i mean not everyone is gonna like us not everyone likes me. And do I give a hoot? Nope. I, I don't care. I'm at that age now where I can tell them to F off. Because I don't care. So, apparently she's, t uh, they said, she's now a new member of the Seth team. There is no team Seth. You, you don't know it. Well, I would recommend you go out and watch some of her, hers because she is to the point. She sticks to the facts. Right, she's to the point. She sticks to the facts. And if she's got questions, she will ask them. So if ever she came on an interview and Chris come up on the panel, she will be the one to ask him. Um, I'll go. I'll pull up the link of the one where she's doing. No, no, it's on my Facebook, isn't it? I'll pull up the link of the one with the interview where she's doing with Tony. I know we don't like Tony, but for once, for once, he actually done an interview 
about Sebastian for once. All right. But you see, I think if he could try to pull any of these stupid, idiotic things that he's come out with over the past, then Buller and Betty would have jumped on him like a... Oh. Got up. Right. I'll get the link. This is the link to... The interview she's done. You need to watch it, but you also need to go over to her channel as well. Bull on Betty. <coughs> Just type in Bull on Betty <coughs> on YouTube and you'll come up with all of the videos. All of them. Right? There's the link for the one she did with Tony. Right? I know, you've had a bit of a rough weekend, haven't you, Dippy? So, but I'm glad everything sorted, sorted itself out for you. I'm glad it's all sorted. I hope it doesn't do it again. But that's a link. So, go and check that out. But I would, I'd say to, you've got to watch her videos, right, to get a... To to see Bullham BHB in her full capacity, you know what I mean? She is full on, but she knows, she checks all the facts, everything. And she don't mess about. Some people, as I said, some don't like her. I'm not going to, I don't know what happened in the past. I don't. So I'm not going to judge someone on, on their past that I don't know anything about. And to be honest with you, I don't care. If they are here for Sebastian and they're truly focused on Sebastian, that's all I care about. I'll actually see, it was, Jay, it was on Jay's channel and it was the interview between Tony and, yeah. So, I'll put the link again in my description when I leave, when I upload it to YouTube. It'll be in my description. But, as I said, not everyone's going to like that, but each to their own. And I think if she stays on the straight path and doesn't get dragged in with all this BS that Tony tends to come in with, Right, then she will keep them on a straight path. I'm um, I'm halfway through it when I come on here, and the other interview I've got to watch. I've got to watch it for research reasons only. Oh God, I don't want to say this, but I've got to watch that interview Chris and Katie did on that. YouTuber's channel. I've got him. Because I, I want to listen to what he says and dissect it. And I want to listen to what she says and dissect it. Because I've been hearing a lot about it. But I want to hear it for myself. You know what I mean? I've only heard little bits of it. Only because I can't stand CP's voice. It does my head in. It does my heading. It makes me feel physically sick when I hear his voice. So, you you watched it, Dippy. Oh, God. It's a joke. It was not, from what I'm hearing, it was nothing about Sebastian. It was all about what he liked to eat, what sort of clothes he liked to wear the most, um, and things like that. Excuse me, your son's been missing. Excuse me, Katie. Katie, if you ever get to watch this video, your son's been missing, what, 91 days now? We don't want to hear what he eats for breakfast. Or that he don't like 
save the water. We don't want to hear that. We want to hear what happened on the Sunday night once you got home. You were able to break it down from the Sunday morning right through to 6 a.m. Monday morning. Right? But you didn't quite break it down because you didn't tell us what you did when you got home. How was he? Was he was he overstimulated? Was he tired? You know what I mean? I think he was overstimulated. This feels more strange every day. It's like, what's that program where it goes, oh, what's that theme music where it goes, I can't even say it, do it now. Do, do, do. No, 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 that's the wrong one. Twilight Zone. It's, a, it's like going into the Twilight Zone sort of thing. And the woman didn't ask no questions. It was shocking. That's what I'm hearing. Right, yeah. Uh, I also listened to one of uh, BHB's one about that video. And um, she was playing some other YouTuber's channel about how she, how this other YouTuber, pardon me, viewed it, right? And I'm sorry, I totally agree with that YouTuber. It was, it was big, big time crime stories. Or something like that, I don't know. I'm going to have to find her out and watch her videos. Right? And, um... I have listened to one or two of her videos, and she's very calming when she talks. But she's on, she's on point about everything. You don't want to know about what food you eat and what water you don't drink, and, or juice you don't drink. We don't want to know whether he wears trousers or whether he likes to wear shorts. We want to know. What made your son feel like, if this is a possibility that he, he left that house on his own, which she first said he did, we want to know what would make your son, 15-year-old autistic lad, want to leave the safety of his home. And the only reason I can come up with, if that was the case, is he didn't feel, he didn't feel safe. That was in his safe zone. And most children, right, they look at their home as their, especially young children, autistic children, anyway, look at their home as their safe zone. They know when they're in there, they are safe. Right? And some my, like my grandson, he goes either in my bedroom or his bedroom. Well, the grandchildren's bedroom. Hi, Georgia. I'm glad to have you here, Georgia. Thank you for being here. Right. So, we're just talking about the interviews. Is it Emma MCOS? Was it Emma who does it? I don't know. So, but we're just talking about the interviews that, that Kate and Crystal. I have not aired it on this show, on my lives. I will not air it on here. Right? And I'll tell you one reason I won't air it on here. Well, there's two reasons. One, CP. I don't like the guy. Full stop. And two, one of the people on the panel, so nice, you watch all these YouTubers will be restreaming this video tonight or tomorrow. And as I said the other night, when was it Friday night? You know what? Bad luck. I, I'm not streaming it. I'm not. It's like I never streamed that one where he went with all the swearing in it. I did show the one which another YouTuber edited all the swear words out. Right, I streamed that one. But there's some I will not stream. Because I don't think they're helpful. They're not helpful for, for one minute in finding 
Sebastian. Right? And I just hope law enforcement, Sumner County Sheriff's Office, is listening to all these YouTubes, all these interviews Chris and Katie are doing. I heard some people say, hold on, hold on, hold on. You lot was all screaming that you wanted proof of life, that Katie was alive. Yeah, we was. Right? I want proof of life. Not just that she's alive. I want proof that she isn't being battered black and flipping blue by him. I want to see her visually. Now, if I did an interview where she come up on panel and she was visual, you saw her face, but then again, you don't know what her body's like. You don't know if you're going to see her arms or a stomach, her back, her legs. You don't know what, you know what I mean? So, because I knew a guy who, when he beat up his missus, he'd go for the arms, the body and the legs because he knew she could keep them covered up. And she did. She always kept her arms covered, her body covered, her legs covered. And one day, I think she was pregnant at the time, and one day, the health is to come, or midwife come. And she showed, we seen her, and she was covered black and blue, from the, literally, waist down. Because that's where it did the damage, from the waist down, where no one would see the bruising. I wouldn't give them the time of day unless they said something about Sebastian and not talking crap. What means nothing in helping him? Exactly. Oh, the one with the witch on her channel. Isn't it Emmett? Sorry. <laughs> Uh, the one with the witch on the channel ID is Emma. Uh, sorry, ID. It's okay. Right. But, um, I'd like to see visual proof of Katie. Because no one's seen, okay, we've heard of her, but no one has seen her since that last interview she did with that one channel. And she was on it for about three or four minutes. And she was on it on her own. She was back at the house. Don't know if Chris was sitting in the same room opposite her. Giving her a little note as to what to say. Don't know. But that was the only interview she did on her own. But I'd say it was just her on her own. Tell you why. Because the interviewer was a man. Chris cannot manipulate me. You know what, Chris? He can't manipulate, manipulate us women in the UK either. There might be some, but there's a lot of us you cannot. So it's a good job you don't live in the UK. Right? I did more to give money for you today than Katie done in 90... Yeah! Yeah, like I said, if I'd just seen that message soon, I'd dip it. It's just that I had, I, they're literally just skipping up, right, doing an update or something, and then coming off. And um, if I'd just seen the message, I would just put a post up about him. Because there's nothing worse than anyone, any child going missing. So, oh God. But, um, anyway, because I decided, oh, what, about two weeks ago to get, get off that crazy train, no more. No, I bailed. I bailed from that crazy train. Because I suddenly realised, hold on, no one's talking about Sebastian. Why is no one talking about Sebastian? This is what we're all here for. This is the little book, this little book, this little, this lad, 
I can't say little boy. This young teenager is the one we are all here for. So why is no one talking about him? And then you got people threatening, threatening big YouTube channels with big platforms, threatening them. Right? And I'm thinking, why? What? Who is it that don't want this? Because they can't get to the searchers no more. They cannot get to the searchers no more. Because the searchers are out there searching. They're not saying when they're out there. They're not saying where they are out there. Right? They're not giving any information out. They just keep it to their little group. And they go. So they can't get to the searchers no more. Um, so someone has done a nice job of infiltrating, I think, in my opinion, these Facebook pages, right? And anyone who supports Seth, who's got these big channels, who supports Seth, well, we don't support Seth, we support Sebastian. And that's what these channels do. They support Sebastian. They're there for Seth, but their main purpose is Sebastian. Well, any channels that do that, they are attacking. Right? They're sending out threats, emails, you name it. I haven't even checked my emails, but I doubt if I get any. I'm not a big enough platform. I'm not a big enough threat for anyone. Right. And I'm glad come to threaten me because I don't live in the US, I live in the UK. And UK may be very small, but still a big country. With lots of people in it. Right. So they're going after the YouTubers. Which I think is disgusting. Because eventually these YouTubers are going to back off. They're going to go, you know what, I've had enough of this BS. Right, I've had enough. And they are going to back off from this case. And you know who suffers? You know who suffers then? Sebastian. No one else. Sebastian. And those, and the YouTubers back off because they don't want the BS. They don't want this beer. They're digging into their lives. They've got people digging into their lives. Right? I don't care who sleeps with who. I really don't. As long as they're getting Sebastian's name out there and Sebastian's picture out there, they can sleep with the fucking king for all I care. I don't care. I really don't. Right? But they're going after them that way. Putting bad, putting word, bad words about, about them. Everything. Now, for the first hour to go, one of the shows I was watching, the YouTuber literally had to say, look, and he told them straight the facts of everything. Because he said he's getting up every morning, he's getting emails, messages on... TikTok. All right. Hold on. Something on Discord. Why is Discord open? All right. All right. And they're going after him that way. And he will back off because no one needs this BS. No one. No one needs all this BS. And I think to stop it, law enforcement needs to come forward now and say something. You know what I mean? Because it's out of hand. One woman said today, she got went on YouTube. She went through 20 channels, went past 20 channels before she found one which was talking about Sebastian.
Right, you seen it, Dizzy Cards. It's disgusting how they're going after him. Absolutely disgusting. And I just hope he said he's not going to back off. He's not going to back down. He's still gonna go be there for Sebastian. But he's just going back again, like I did. He's starting again from the beginning, like I did. I'll text you, Dippy Bird. I'll send you the text about it. Okay? I don't know. Mm. Just happy if I get the wrong. Right, Mandy Egg, yeah? Just sent you a message. Just sent you a message, DP. No, I can't watch her. No, sorry, I can't. No, I can't do that. I won't even have a uh, name. <laughs> no. Yeah, just leave him alone. He's done nothing to anyone. And as I said, who sleeps with who? Where they leave, where they don't leave, you know what I mean? If they're smoking pot in the kitchen, I don't care. I really don't care. As long as they are talking about Sebastian and getting his name out there. Okay, right. And getting his name and picture out there and keeping his name and picture out there, that's all I care about. And he said, isn't, right, and people say, about the Pascal show. Oh, Pascal's backing off. Pascal's backing off. No, he's not. I watched his live the other night. Well, one of his. It wasn't live when I saw it, put it that way. Never is. And he said at the end, I am not backing off. He does talk about other cases. And if he has anything new to add to this case, like the other night he did the interview with the ex-FBI woman, and we got some interesting facts of that. Right? we got some interesting facts of that interview. So, and the one fact that we got of that interview was the, which is leading into what I'm talking about tonight, is... The landfills. Why did they only search the landfill in Kentucky? Why? Why did they only search that landfill? So... And the fact they only spent one day there. And she said, when you search a landfill, you have to go in a grid, upwards, left to, top to bottom, left to right. You cannot do that in a day. You can't. So what was the point in doing that landfill search? Just to show everyone, hey, look, look, we're, we're looking, we're searching, we're here. They wasn't even at the right flipping landfill. And they haven't searched any other landfill. Because if we had, if they had, I'm sure the news people would have caught ear of this and being out there. Okay. So, oh shit, could you buy glasses on? Sorry, sorry. I just stuck, went to pull my chair forward and hit my face in, on my mic. Sorry. <laughs> so, we're looking at the Kentucky landfill. Now, when I pulled it up weeks and weeks ago, 
Okay. Just to see why they search there. Right. Right, let's have a look. Uh it I found something wrong it and it said Um what did it say? Ah Let's have a look. Once I'll find the information I'll put it up on screen. Yeah, I'm fine. It's good job I got that soft cushioning on the mic. <laughs> because if I hadn't got that soft cushioning, then it probably would have done me some damage to me. eye. Right. Right, let's have a look. Yeah, this isn't what I like. This isn't what I've found before. God. Why can't I find that information about Kentucky? Kentucky landfill maps. Nope, don't want that. Anyway, what I found out was it was used for, you know, the construction site where the new houses are being built, and you've got those big skips, which are filled with concrete, wood, and all that lot. Oh my god, Dippy Bag, I can't even put that up on my chat. Oh my lord. <laughs> I'm not putting that one up, Dippy Bag. No way. Anyway, and it told me that it was used mainly for, well, it was used for, like, uh, construction site stuff, right? Concrete, uh, waste dirt, like, you know, when you dig up somewhere and you've got all this leftover dirt and it goes into the tips, that, wood, metal, pipes, you name it, that's where they take all that stuff. Now, okay, I can see them searching the landfill in case it was put into one of those skips. But they didn't say that. Law enforcement said the reason they searched was... I'm glad you find it funny be. <laughs> Is anyone else seeing what she's putting up here in my chat chat? Oh, what I have to put up with with Dippy. Anyone, it says that I, if they said, oh, it's because if it, there's a strong possibility he could have been putting one of them escapes, then fine. But they did him. They turned around and they said, it's because the garbage men reported that on the day they collected their rubbish on the 26th, at between 5 and 6, right? Their bin was heavier than usual. She's wild tonight, I tell you that much. What you want tonight, Dippy? Right? So... <coughs> 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 <clears throat> I can't find that information out now. But the fact that she said one day is not enough to search a landfill. <laughs> and it isn't. I'll try and find it. I'm still going through all my information here. Uh, I said of the blue man. <clears throat> so, oh, 
Oh god. Someone take that joint out of her hand. <laughs> Yep, that explains it, doesn't it, cuz? I'm cuz. Anyway, so, I want to know, right, and I'm going to pull up the names, I'm going to see whatever landfills are there. And the other one in Galaxy, in Henderson, yeah? Next, oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> you know what? I put in land film in Henderson film. You know what it comes up with? Number one, county jail. It's got, yeah, a child just does not vanish. And I said the other week, I've got a feeling your neighbours are fighting. Is it a good, is it a good argument, Dippy? Can you hear what they're saying? <laughs> oh, you're going to look out the window? Okay. You're going to be the, the curtain twitcher. <laughs> anyway. What was I saying? Let's get back to this. Right, it does it comes up here? Landfill in Hendersonville. One county jail. How is a county jail a landfill? And then we've got a solid waste and recycling convenience centre. Right. Uh, let's have a look, see where it says, where's this one? Where does it, oh yes, oh God. honest, honest, I've got to show you this, you're not going to, it's, you, yeah, last week was better, full on fight, she was covered, um, <laughs> and in, and she got nicked, she looked like Kerry the movie, <laughs> God, in hell. Oh my lord. Um I'm gonna share something with you for all of you to see. This is landfills in Hendersonville, okay? Look at the two places they've got marked up. County jail and Henderson County Solid Waste Division. And then you've got the waste, solid waste and recycling convenience centre that's closed, open until whenever. But what a county jail got to do with landfills? I know we fill them up with uh, cons and violent people. My son shared on Snapchat, it was crazy. <laughs> Oh, I used to have some wild times when I lived in Birmingham, in the flat I had in Birmingham. As my one neighbour said one night, as we were all sitting on, sitting in the passageway by our flat doors, and the neighbours downstairs come up to join us, and my one neighbour said, this is better than EastEnders. <laughs> So, I don't have none of that here where I live. Even though it's not a great area, I don't have no, no in house fighting. Not that I've ever seen any or heard any. Some nights you hear a lot of shouting, but that's mainly coming from the club across the road, believe it or not. It's across the flipping road. But Sound travels, 
And on a sat Friday night and Saturday night, you can hear me. Really? Good old days for me, that would have been. I miss those sort of days, I do. I like a bit of gossip sometimes. Anyway, what am I saying? We're on the landfill. Right, so we've got a solid waste and there's it there. Would that be... Would solid waste come under, like, general household waste? Got county jail, where two people might be going very soon. And then we've got Henderson County Solid Waste Division. Okay, so what do they do here? Like they don't do there. But it doesn't show any more. Hang on. No, this is just date offices. That's just date offices, yeah. But that's it. So you got that one there. But that's, it's not, um, it says Langfield. And it, where is it, where is it? Oh, down, it is where? Transylvania County Langfield. Where's that? Is that anywhere near Tennessee? No, I think we're going out way out way now. No. Let's try land fields in Gallatin, yeah. Oh, we've got a Wilson County landfill. Right. Where's that to where they live? We've got a Smith County landfill. But where's all that to where they, we live? That's White House. There's Galatin. Right, that's Galatin. So we know they live around here. Yeah. So that's nearer. Still a distance, but still nearer than flipping Kentucky. But a lot of people, I'm going to go on Google Maps because a lot of people go on about this second generation construction site, right? I did look at it once and I'm not sure if the reason behind that was because um, CP's mother and father, stepfather owned it. Just help if I spell it right. Is that in Galaxy? And what am I doing? Right. Yeah, all done. Uh, what we got here? When it opens up. Moving with me, then you'll go with No. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. What? Who owns this house?
Alright. Now I've just pulled up second generation construction. Alright. In Gallatin and the Facebook page. Oh well. Not a safe who ever lives there. Are you joking me? So she is in real estate then, Kathy is. Kathy Guy. Can you all see this? That. Oh. Get the right one in me. That is Kathy Barrasox. This is new to uh, second of April twenty. That was a year ago. So she's second generation is must be um. Do they build these houses and then sell them? You know what I mean? Wow. That's bigger than my, that's about the whole size of my flat altogether. No, if it's by you, got Kathy, we don't, we're not interested. We don't want to buy. So whose house is this? You know, hey, Kathy's because we know where they live. You can send a message directly to second generation construction. Right, let's come off there, Mingy. Um, I'm trying to find... My mic is in the way at the moment. Of my screen. Um... Let me go into Google Maps. Right, I'm going down to Google Maps because there's apparently, and you know, Seth said it's like a holding place for the general waste. It doesn't stay there, it doesn't get dealt with there, it just gets dumped there, then picked up again by another truck and took somewhere. Now let's type in second generation construction. <sighs> Marked. No, 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 no. No. Ah. Why can't I find it now? I did find it before. I did find it before. But I can't find it now. That didn't matter. Because I don't think, because Seth did say, hold on, they are nice sizes, aren't they? Seth 
CP is uncle has a construction business, is what I heard. Send a message and ask. <laughs> Don't tempt me. M cause his family do a lot of things by the looks of it. They got their hands into everything, even, even, um, a crematorium. Oh, where they, where they do the crematorium, cremations, whatever. A member of the family is a manager or somewhere of something like that. They've got their hands into everything, I swear to God, that family has. That's why I'm thinking they could hide a body, get rid of a body very easily. Right? Very easily get rid of a body. I say they should do an audit on the place where that relative or whoever it is works at the crema at the crematorium. Because when they do an audit, right, they have to find out, they have to give them all the details of all the funerals, all the cremations they've done. And each cremation, it has to have the time it took, everything. Now, if there's one cremation, which has took longer than it should have, then that is highly sus. sus. So when they're doing all it, they have to tell them everything. How many people is in the? How many people? The one cremation time, time. How long it took? Everything. They go into everything when they have an audit. Not just the money beside me. Believe me, they don't just do that. So, someone should have an audit on that crematorium. Where the so-called family member works. I swear to God, my cat is going to start off again now, isn't, isn't he? Yep, he's going to start again. So, where am I looking? Second generation. Oh, Google Maps. Let's share. We're back at Google Maps. Don't know why. Don't even ask me why we're back at Google Maps. 108. 1008. I don't know. But we are. Right then. Right. Um, just have a zoom around. Let's have a look. If I pull out far enough, I can get bigger areas. See if there's any landfills anywhere. <coughs> but I still think... I'm not saying he did run out that house, because if he did, he ran out in fear of his life. Right? But I think something either happened in the house, right? Or could be two things that happened in the house. It could have been over-medicated, Right? Or there's a bit of a a bit of a hustle, a bit of a tug and war between the mum and the son. Something happens, he hit his head, he then finally fell asleep, went in, in the morning, I went in and woke him up and he was gone. You can't wake someone up if they're not there. Sorry. That is a um, no that is not um A uh, mistake. Well, like say something wrong. Instead of saying, I went in to wake him up and he wasn't there. No. I went in, or something like that, she said. I'm not going back through that interview again. No way. No way.
I'm trying to see if I can see any landfills around here. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of construction going on in, in these areas. A lot of construction. New houses being built. Right? All up here. I know this is back in... Oh no, this is 2024 data. This map is. Right? So it's 2024. But we know this is outdated here because we know there's houses here now. And we know there's all these houses here and all these houses along here. We know there's houses all along here now. Because people have drove up there. Right? Oh, go right there, I'm sorry. But, why, if he ran out of that house in fear of his life, would he not have ran out of that house to, uh, to this neighbour? You still stand by that, where he left his um, phone in the, his five-wheeler? I don't know. I don't know, Gippy, because it's something isn't fitting right. You know, when you got that jigsaw puzzle and then you've got these missing flipping pieces and you just can't fit them in or find them. You can't find that missing piece. There's a missing piece. He turned up at work at quarter past five that morning. Why would you turn up that early when you don't start till seven? Or even half six if you started. Why would you turn up at quarter past five? And then people are saying, I've heard people say, oh, well, he got, he, uh, what was he? And I said, no, he, he didn't, he didn't leave work at 1.30. He got kicked off the crane at between 10 and 11 a.m. And that's when he come back. Facts, yeah. That's what I'm missing. That's what we're missing there. So there's one piece. Why would you go into work at 5.15 when you don't start till 7? You're not, are you? Not when you've got a 12-hour shift in front of you. Right? Plus, if he got that phone call off Katie at 6 o'clock or 5 past 6, he had plenty of time to tell his manager, the work site manager, look, look, Kev, I've got to go home, whatever your name is, I don't care. But say to Kev, look, Kev, I've got to go home, emergency at home. I'll fill, I'll fill, I'll fill you in later, right? And just go. He could have been home if he left there by what? Quarter past six. Quarter past six. Quarter past seven. Quarter past seven. Quarter past five, quarter past five. He could have been home by quarter to ten. Ten a.m. Ten in the morning. He didn't get home. I'll just call it the site manager, Kev. I don't know his name. Could be Ian. Could be Patrick. Could be anything. But we have Karen, so we'll have a Kev. Yeah, it's about 1.30 in the afternoon you got home. So that would make it 11 to 12, 12 to 1. So that would make it right if he was kicked off the crane at 10 a.m. You like Kev. It's up to morning. Right? If he got kicked off his crime between 10 a.m. and 11, that would make sense, him getting home about half one. 
But the other big factor in it, why did he spend the next day, or whenever it was, 17 hours, 17 hours to drive down there to pick the five-wheeler up, up? Now, I know you hear people say, well, you have to make sure everything's secure and locked in, all the cupboards are locked, the doors are locked, so they don't swing open while you're driving and all this stuff. Fine. It's not going to take you. It takes three and a half hours to get down there, so... Four, five, six, seven. So it's not going to take you 14 hours to do all that. Right? It's not. So he goes back. He does all the checks on the five-wheeler. Hooks it up to his van. But he don't come home till the next time. Why? Why did he drive down there when he could have drove home the same day? Right? Even if he sat down there for two hours and had a cup of tea before coming home. Right? He still had time to get down there, pick that five-wheeler up. Right? Hook it up onto the back of his truck, pull away, and come home. So, why did he stay that extra, well, extra day? Because he's down there literally a whole day. Those 17 hours are a big red flag to me. And I swear to God, if law enforcement haven't checked up on this, I'd be fuming. Because that's, like, okay, take seven hours off. Three hours there. Three and a half hours there, three and a half hours back. So take seven hours off. That's ten hours. Ten hours. What could you do in ten hours when there's a missing child? Where could you get to in ten hours and back? You know what I mean? Like you sort of like because when you when you're getting rid of a anything, you've got a factory getting there, getting rid of the item, and then getting back. So, if you've got 10 hours, you've got to say four and a half hours there, five hours there, a few minutes getting rid of whatever, jump back in the car, drive back, five hours back. So, where could you have gone in 10 hours? That's a big area he could have drove to. There and back. Five hours there, five hours back. So it's not ten hours. So where could he go in five hours? So there's another question. You know what I mean? He had ten hours to do what he had to do. For we know. For we know perhaps Sebastian didn't get home that night. Right? We know how good his mum is at mimicking Sebastian's talk, how he talks. We know that from that interview she did the other night. How do we know she's not very good at mimicking how he skips up the driveway in the dark? No lights. Just a little handheld, little hand size pocket torch that does not give off a lot of light. So what's saying she didn't put the bins out and then did that funny skip up the driveway like Sebastian does. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not saying anything. I'm just... Throwing it out there for people to think about. Right? Now, so she did, he didn't come home that night. Where would she mean? Right? Okay, DP. Put that smoke down. Right? Uh, where could she... 
where could they hang over? If she, if something happened in the car, could he have knocked his head in the car? You know what I mean? If he was sitting in the front of the car and she's gone over and gave him a push to the side and he's knocked his head to the side on the car. It doesn't necessarily need, need to show blood. All it needs is a knock to the head. All it needed was a knock to the head. But apparently they've... I don't know. It said she got home about 6.35, 6.39. Which would be about right if they're seeing her leaving that Texas Roadhouse at 6.30. Because it takes about 9 to 10 minutes to get home. So would she have had time to do a handover? Would she have had time to assault a son, caused an injury where it killed him, unalived him, I should say, and then managed to do a pass over, pass off? No. No, she wouldn't have had time. She's got 10 minutes to get home, and she got home in that 10 minutes. So, I don't know. Um, each time I look at this, I look into something. I come back with more questions. What is going on? Why are... I wish to God, Katie, someone in that group. And I don't count Seth in this. I don't. Because some people are coming up with some stupid... Like... Oh, well, we know he's at work, but he could have arranged with someone else to take his son. Why? Why would he do that when he was having his son for good come, come the end of the school term? You know what I mean? Why? Why would he be out there every day from morning to night looking for his son? Right? I need, uh, I'll tell you now, Seth, Seth is running, everyone's running Seth down, but Seth is going through a very hard time. He don't know where he stands at the moment. He doesn't. He's being pulled one way by Tony, then another way by other people saying, get rid of Tony. You know what I mean? But we've got to leave that up to, we can't do nothing. Right? We've told him. He's been told it's up to him now what he does. If he decides to stick with Mike, uh, Tony, then that's his decision. And we, we should not question that. Right? I just wish Tony would stop giving out false information. Well, he hasn't given out no false information since that last one where about the Amber Alert. He hasn't given out none this weekend, has he? So, let's see if I can find something else about this second generation. Hmm, Gallatin, Tennessee, phone, website, some, some your county, Davidson County. Okay, let's have a look at that. Let's go to Google Maps. Oh. Oh, God. Shag. Construction. Where did I say that was? Uh, Davidson County. Right. 
Right. Ah, there it is. I knew it was round here somewhere because they live round here somewhere. I'm sure they live up that way somewhere. I'm not sure. I know it's round here somewhere they live. But here's second generation. I can't see no landfill round here. It said there's a, like a landfill at the back. But it's not showing any landfill. There it is. That's it. Ooh, what's at the back of there? Oh, that's interesting to see. Is that Kathy and Rotting Hands, um trailer? Never noticed that last time I was there. Right. But this is second generation. Oh, it's going to know that is an express second generation. I'm going to try and do somewhere. Oh, this is 2019, so it might, it might be second generation now. Yeah. But that was 2019. This, this is July 2013. Right. Okay. Seeing that sign is gone now. There's no sign there. See the five wheeler, and this is July twenty thirteen. I know this is a long way off. It's like eleven years ago when this was took. But I definitely know that is second generation there. Like their offices there. What's this place here? BJ's. Hmm. Interesting. <coughs> See. <coughs> This is what throws me off. Here, it says July 2019, and it's got that sign there. But go down here, and you got July 2013, no sign. No lorry. All right? Now, I'm going to see. <coughs> oh, God. Come on.
summit services and roofing. Towing services? No. Right. Now let's have a look. See, it's never in 2019. Totally different place there. But come down to here in 2013, I need something else. Tree service and roofing. Okay. Wonder if that's still there. Google Maps, you need updating. See, if I click on that, it says United Scraping, Scrapping and Alignment. But beach, when I punched in um, when I punched in second generation, this is where it brought me to. But like I said, go down here. And the change, date changes. And what is it now? Still United K scrap, scraping alignment. But this is where they send you for your not second generation construction. Let's see what's at the back of this place. Hi. See what I mean? It's got second generation. Construction. The hold on, hold on. United. Oh no! Oh no! 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 Second generation. This is where. It's supposed to be here. Right, look at the map. See, I'm right on it there. Second generation, I'm right on it there. So I'm in the right spot. Let's have a look. So we're second generation. Home builders. Hmm. Now this was 2024. This map thing, this one. And it's supposed to be here somewhere. But it's not there. What's this place? So if I zoom in, if I go right in, you don't even see this. That's not there. So that's a new building. So I don't think second generation is there anymore. But they said, round the back of here. Is a landfill. <laughs> Could this be it? What the wrong about? Resource authority in some new county. Could that be it? Where the wrong about? You know what I mean? Because it won't let my little man down. 
I'm wondering if that's what they're on about then, this place here. Because it's at the back. There's second generation. And they said it was at the back of there. That's the only place I can see which looks like a... It's not a landfill. I'd say to, it is like a holding bay. You know what I mean? Anyway. <coughs> okay. So. There's second generation. I'll get back here. What am I doing? Get off there. There's second generation, which is no longer... Ooh. There. Click on that spot, it'll tell you. But there's nothing there. <laughs> so I think that's no longer a building there anymore. Or a cabin or whatever it was. And I'm wondering if this is what they're wrong about that, like a landfill. But Seth said, Recycling Centre and Transfer Station. Yeah. It's like a holding place. So they put all the rubbish there into whatever and then gets moved on somewhere else. So that's the place we're on about. Has it been checked? We don't know. Doubt it because they've not checked anywhere else. I they have not checked anywhere else. There's a church. I know I know there's supposed to have been a search going on this weekend in the forests what forest so? It said in the forest at the back of the church. So it can only be this here. But would that be a lot of private land there? You know what I mean? This could be private land. You can't just walk onto someone's land. Oh, we're just looking for a little missing boy. Before you get your head shot off. You know what I mean? So you've got to be careful when you say, Oh, we're going to do a search. Because I know this is a lot of private land all around here. And there's the back of the church here. The woods. Let's take the forest at the back of the church. So that would be there. What's that place? Oh, it's a house. So it's going to be private property, isn't it? So you can't just go on <coughs> <coughs> someone's land. So I hope when they did go and do a search there, all around here, they did find out whether they was going on people's properties or not. Because this is what's getting people a bad name, is people are going out searching and they're not getting their proper in, uh Details of whether they can go on the search, whether they can be on that land, they don't know. They could, you know what I mean? It's private land. You get your head, you get shot at. It's not like over in the UK. They don't shoot at you here, I don't think. I don't know. I've never been in a situation where I've been on private land. Right, so I just think it all needs to be searched again. This, all this, because look at that, that is a lot of land, a lot of coverage, ground coverage. Right?
I'd like to know about these caves. Where are these caves that are supposed to be around here somewhere? Because I think if they've got two caves that they can't check because they've caved in, right? Why can't they get a, a qualified, trained team of, uh, of what they call people who go into caves? Why can't they get them in and get that excavated? Because how do we know? How do they know? They got that caved in, cave in if after Sebastian had gone in there, if he left his home. As I said, if he left that house with no shoes, no money, no phone, no coat, none of his, uh, his little computer thing, game thing, game console, not his game console, nothing. He left in fear. He ran out of that house. Right? The only other way he left that house without being seen again is in the back of a car. Now, from what I understand today, she went out about, what, when they phoned the police, about 20 past six? Well, we know the dispatch didn't get it till 6.30 something, 35. So... There's 15 minutes. So, there's um, Chris saying, well, I went through the sheriff's office because it, it, mess, it stops all this um, messing about going from the police through to dispatch and then whatever. It still went through dispatch. Right? So, um... I'm watching my cat at the window trying to get these little flies that are outside. That's how dumb my cat is. Anyway, so, um, why did, so she left, she said she was in the car as he was throwing in the place. So that would have been about, say, quarter past six. Why? And then people said she was only gone 10 minutes. Yeah. Which would have meant by the time they come off the call, say 25 past six, half six, she should have been home by. If she was only gone 10 minutes, she should have been home by half six. But she wasn't. Law enforcement got there and there was no one at the house. She was still driving around. So could, did she do a handover? Did she hide his body somewhere? Did she have time? Possibly. Police law enforcement got there about 10 to 7, 5 to 7. She didn't turn up until after they got there. So, so she got there. So they got there at quarter to 7. She didn't get there till like, say, 10 to 7, 7 o'clock. So she was driving around, like she said, for 45 minutes. Because she said she was driving around for 45 minutes. So where did she go in 45, well, 45 minutes, half that because they're coming back. 20. Where could she gone in 20 minutes and back again? 20 minutes one way, 20 minutes back. The neighbour said she was gone for only 10 minutes. Katie said she was gone for like 45 minutes. Which makes more sense what she's saying, because apparently when the police got there, you heard it on the dispatch call, no one was home. And that was, what, about quarter to seven by then? Quarter to seven, ten to seven. So 
where has she been since quarter past six to when she got home? Questions, questions. More questions that we can't get answered. Because the only people who know the answer to these questions are not answering these questions. Right? All she'll say is, I jumped in my car, I drove around the area, I went to the school and he and stops. Stops dead. Stops dating her sentence. And he was what? And he what? What was you going to say after that? Because she stopped dating her sentence. Now we know the school is only what? Hmm. Not even five minutes up the road. Not in a car, it isn't. Right? I'm gone. Directions. Watching I'm at school. Um, oh God. What thing I'm at that school? Hold on. Get rid of this one here. Go to one or right. Right, there, let's zoom in. Beach High School. All right. All right. It takes 20 minutes walking. Okay. Why long does it take three minutes in a car to get there? Right, so if she drove up here and ran by the school, and apparently they've got video from the school of her driving around. Right, so say she went up this way and round, yeah? And then up this way, back round. That would have only took a what? Six, ten minutes at the most, which makes sense with what the neighbours said that she was only gone for ten minutes. But from what they played on from the dispatch call, they say it says stage she wasn't there when they got there, and they got there at what ten to seven, five to seven, something like that. If if not sooner. So if she'd gone up to here, right, and that was say quarter past six, yeah, and Seth said, get back home, the police are coming straight away. She should have been home. Oh, well. She should have been home by half six. She should have been there before the police even turned up. But she wasn't. She was not there when the police turned up. Now, I'm going to listen to that dispatch call again tomorrow. And I'll write, I'm going to write it down what it says. Right. I'll take the time out to write it down, time and what's being said, the time and what's being said, yeah? So if I've got it in pa on paper or on screen written down, I can see a better visual time stamp but today it's i'm sure it said she was not there because they said she was driving around in a blue baby blue whatever car she drives so where did she go from quarter past six to ten to seven seven o'clock Where did she go? We know to his parents' house, it's about 30 minutes. 
if I knew where the parents live now, I can't remember. But we know it's about 30 minutes. So that's not going to be feasible. But it could be feasible if they'd made, phoned this mum up and said, can you meet Katie at this place, which is halfway point? Now, the mother, it's, there's reports saying there is reports of a baby blue, what about brown car, which belonged to the mother, not, not Katie, but Chris's mother, parked up there. And right next to him is the storage units, which I've been told, I'm not 100% sure because I can't get confirmation on this, so I don't really want to say, but until I get confirmation on that, I'm not going to say nothing, right? Because I don't want to say something and then it not be true. So I want confirmation. And the only way I'm going to get that is if I get someone send me an email saying, yes, he's got this, they've got a storage unit here. You know what I mean? I'm not going to get that. So, could she put him in there? I don't know. Did they have a storage unit there? And she's gone there and put him in there for a later date for them to move him properly. Like the next day, when he went back to get the five-wheeler. Or did the mother, Chris's mother, have something to do with it? Again, we don't know. It's all ifs. So we don't know. The facts are the 26th of February. No, facts. The facts. The 25th of February at 9 pm, Sebastian went to bed. 12, between 9 pm and 12 pm, Katie was on the phone to CP, who was down in Mississippi, wherever. Right? She was on the phone for three hours. Now, Chris slipped up in this interview they did because Chris said that normally when he's not there, the dogs sleep with Katie. Right? So why did Katie say on that phone when she was talking to Chris? She said, Chris told me to get up, put the cat dogs in the pen and go to bed. That's a whole different scenario which we'll be looking at. Right, so she goes to bed at 12 o'clock. This is just a fax. So she last sees Sebastian at 9 p.m. <coughs> he goes to bed, no problems, right? She goes to bed at 12 p.m. She gets up at 6 a.m. She goes in to wake him up. He's gone. She runs round the house frantic for like three minutes. Right, it wouldn't take you three minutes to run around that house. It really wouldn't. Uh, she then phones Chris, which is say about five past six. She's talking to Chris on the phone. He then says, hold on. So he phones the police then. He said he phoned about 20 past six. So I think, what was they talking about from like, say, five, ten past six? To 20 past 6. Why did it take them 10 minutes to say, oh, done then, uh, let's phone the police? So, all in all, you could say 15, 20 minutes was wasted where they could have phoned the police and had the police there a lot sooner than they did. A lot sooner. Right? By doing what they did, they could have had the police there a lot sooner. So that those are the facts. Then from there we've got facts that a dog, one dog, which is in the dispatch call, 
one dog hit on a scent that led behind the neighbor's house down to the end of the road, all the way, all the way up Caitlin or Caitlin Road, up to the construction site here. Yeah. The dog leg down here, behind this house, round all the way up here, all the way up here, up to a retention pond, which I believe is round about here. Right? Now a dog picks up a scent. A dog, if he picks up a scent at water, will not dive into the water unless commanded to. This police officer obviously didn't have full control of his dog because they said he's running after his dog. Without running. So he's running to keep up with his dog. Right? That dog would not have jumped in that water just for fun. He wouldn't have jumped in the water full stop. He just stopped at the water's edge. It would just stopped at the water's edge. It would not have dived into the water unless it seen some something or someone in the water. You know what I mean? But even then, I don't think it would have dived in. I think it would have waited for the command from his off his trainer to tell him to go to jump in. So, them are the facts. Fact. Seth was at work. He works at a corrections facility. He's on camera from the moment he walks into work at 6.30, 6.45 to 7 when he leaves the next morning. And why is he on camera? Because you cannot walk for anywhere around a correction facility. You cannot go through one door one corridor, one room, right, without being on camera. Why is that? Oh, yeah, we have criminals. So he's on camera the whole time he's at work. Right. Chris, the stepfather, Confirmed, is at work at quarter past five in the morning. Don't ask me why he was there that early. Especially when... Um, especially when he doesn't start till 7am. But why did he not just get himself dismissed from his works before even starting? He had that phone call from Katie at ten past six. Right? So why didn't he go to his site manager say, I'm sorry, I've got to go home. There's a problem at home. I'll inform you later. Right? And get in his car and drive back home. He didn't. He went to work at quarter past five. And no, don't start till seven. He climbed up in that big crane of his. And he sat there, he was arsing his hands, being grumpy little frecker like he is. Work colleague put a complaint about him. Site manager come along, told him to get out, get down out the crane. Between 10 and 11 a.m. that morning. That's when he made his way home, back to here. And got home about 1.30 in the afternoon. What does that tell you for a stepfather who loves this boy? This house is full of love for that boy. That boy never went without love. Why do parents have to emphasise the fact that this child, their child, never went without love? No one should have to emphasise the fact because it should be took automatically. That child was loved. You know what I mean? Why are they so... When they did that interview, he was 
it was always given love. It, this house was this in this home. It, we had nothing but love. Yeah, well, we believe that, don't we? And if you believe that, CP, then I believe. Oh my God! I've just seen three pigs fly past my fourteenth floor flat window. Okay, such a loving home. So, them are the facts. We have got nothing else apart from the fact that I have searched this whole area. All this. All this. All this. Don't know how far up here it goes. Don't know. Could go to White Hill, don't know. But there's a lot of terrain there. You can tell how when it goes up and down if it's hilly or not by the way the trees go and the paths are in it. You know what I mean? That's a big terrain. They covered all that in eight days. They had a lot of people out searching, but they covered it all in eight days. Right. So... Anyway, but them are the facts, and those are what we can only work on. And what we are working on now, what we go on now, is not just the facts. We stick to the facts. We keep coming back to the facts. Well, of the case. And the facts of the case don't, don't seem to match up with what we're hearing. The words they're using. Like that interview they did the other week, last week. I'm going to have to listen to it. I've heard little bits of it. And it does not sound like a, a mother whose child has been missing for nine, nearly nine... By the time this interview went out, it was coming up to like 89 days. 88, 89 days. It was 90 days yesterday, 91 days today. Three months to the day he went missing. To today he went missing. Three months. And now sitting on a YouTube channel, chit-chatting about nothing. Oh, he don't like fizzy pop, uh, water, he don't like carbonated or whatever it is. And then mimicking the way he talks. And talking about how he don't like shorts. Well, it all depends. Sometimes he likes shorts, but then he might like... You know, we don't care. I'm glad I've heard of her. I'm glad I've heard her voice. Because we know she's alive. But we don't care about all that cops wallop. Sorry. Don't. Why don't you sit there on a channel, Katie, CP, if you ever get to listen to any of my YouTube channels, and while you're going, I think it'll only be the UK people covering this case, because you're scaring off everyone else, aren't you, in the US? You're threatening them. You can't get to us in the UK, sorry. You can try. You can't. And there's quite a few of us still in the UK covering this case. Anyway, we don't want to hear that. We want to hear you pleading. You, Katie, talking to you now, Katie, you said you believe he's being held by someone. Well, plead. Put a plea out to that f person who's got your child. Put a plea out. Beg them. 
to bring your child back. But we're not hearing nothing like that. CP, he can keep his mouth shut, I don't care about him. But Katie, you gave birth to this son 15 years ago. How you can let that guy you call your husband treat your son, the one you gave birth to, like you, like he did, is disgusting. And now you can't even put a plea out to have him back home. You've heard Seth many times breaking down about his son. Breaking down. He said his life is his son. He said at the beginning, my, my life starts when I pick my son up on a Friday night. My life finishes on a Sunday night when I take him home. I then go to work Monday to, Monday to whatever for two weeks. Just do my work. Then my life starts again when I pick my son up two weeks later on a Friday. And my life finishes again on a Sunday. And so on. This Sebastian is Seth's life. He has no life. So if you've got any decency as a mother, please, please, Katie, I don't care if you was in the Navy. I don't care. You must have some feeling somewhere. Deep down, you must have some feeling there for your son. You can be sad, oh, she's ex Navy. She knows how to cover all her feelings. You know what? I can cover my feelings up as well. But when it comes to my children or my grandkids, no, no. I can hide how I feel. People can say to me, you feel, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Then inside I'm breaking. You know what I mean? I know I told my feelings. But Katie, this is your son. You've got to have some feelings somewhere for your son. Stop mimicking how he talks and whether he likes fizzy juices or no fizzy juices, whether he likes steak or not or whatever. That is not going to help us find your son. It is not. And you sitting there saying, oh, law enforcement told us not to go out looking. Well, law enforcement aren't there no more. Law enforcement haven't been looking physically for how many weeks now? They've searched for one week, so for eight, nine, ten, eleven, for eleven weeks. They haven't been looking physically for eleven weeks. So what was stopping you from going out? When the police stopped their search, what was stopping you, Katie, as a mother, to get out there and look for your son instead of sitting on a YouTube channel and go, please keep looking for our son, please keep looking, I know he's out there somewhere. Well, get out there and look for him, for Christ's sake, woman, this is your son. And I hope to God someone shows you this video. I hope to God you hear these words because this is your song we're talking about. I'm not talking about the boy next door or the boy down the road. It's your song. You've got to have some feelings somewhere. Get out there. Come home to where your song will come home to. Come home. You said the door will always be open for when he walks back. But that door isn't open. It needs to be open, Katie. You need to come home. And you need to be there, out there looking. You think people are going to attack you? They're not going to touch you. They've got more things to worry about than putting you up against a wall. They're not bothered about that. They want you to show some empathy. They want you to show that you care. They want you to be out there looking 
for your son. You've not even been to one of his vigils. And don't come with the bull crap. Oh, well, we went to the bike shop for that one vigil because we was arranging some bike ride. No, you wasn't arranging a bike ride. No, you wasn't. We can see through the B B C or the BS or whatever. We see through that. And all we want is for you to step up as a mother and talk. Tell us something that is going to help us find your son. Anyway. Oh, I've been missing some chats. Get your bag back. Is she back? Is she back? Right. Sorry, I didn't see it then. Uh, yeah. Right, so... Please, do the right thing, Katie. Because that stand by my man is not working. Because I can guarantee you... When it comes down to the crunch, that man is going to throw you under the bus. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Because I've tried looking for landfills. Right? And there's one, one or two closer than Kentucky. And they're in Galaxy. Right, so they're appearing, galactine, right, here's galactine, and it was over here somewhere. It was over here somewhere. Uh, so there's one a lot closer than Kentucky. Why has that not been searched? Why have these storage units not been searched? Why did law enforcement wait two weeks to go and check the surveillance camera on that store? Right. Why did law enforcement wait two weeks to go and get the surveillance camera from beach marking? Why? When they said they being in search, got all the video cameras from all these houses, from the school, from all the other places in the area, right? Why didn't they get this one? They've got houses here. There's two or three houses along this road here, opposite the school, opposite that shop. Did they not think of going checking them houses for videos? Why did it take them two weeks to go to that place? Big smoking. Why? To find out, oh, sorry, we have a, a turnaround period of, of two weeks and it's gone, it's taped over. You cannot blame Big Market for that, for their technology. You can't. Law enforcement at fault there. Right. Was it because they only had one person come forward? I don't care if one person come forward. They had houses to check. They've got houses up here they could be checking. You know what I mean? If he warned it off, he could have been walking around any of these houses. So why didn't I check beach marking? I'm sure they went there. The police had been there during the days, during those eight days they were searching to get something to eat or drink. You know what I mean? Fill up their petrol, fill up their police cars. I don't know if they go to the normal garages or if they have to go back to the police station to fill it up. I don't know. But why wasn't Beach Market camera checked within the second, by the second day, third day at the latest? 
not two weeks later. So some big mistakes have been left here. But as I said, he could have walked out, but he, he didn't walk out. He rang out that house, if anything. But I don't think he did that. I just need to connect the doctor as to how she could get him out of that house and do like a, an exchange or something into another car. I'd like to know how long a body has to be in, a dead body has to be in a, say, a car before it will leave a scent of decom. Right? So say the body's been dead like, I don't know, eight hours, six hours, eight hours, and then it was put in the back of a car, and it was only in there, uh, what, five, ten minutes, fifteen minutes at the most, at the very most, would it leave a scent in the car? That's what I'd like to know. And I might actually do some... Google some, do some research to my, on that, right, so I can come back to you about that, because that, it, depending on what the research says, depends on whether she could have got him out of that house in the car or not, and going an exchange, because we all know Chris found his mum after he found the police. And he found a place that he said 20 past 6. So say half past 6 he found his mum. Right? She could have met somewhere along here. You know what I mean? And then turn around and come all the way back to our house to meet the police at 7 o'clock. Anyway, everyone. I'd just like to say thank you for being here tonight with me. Keep Just keep what I've been saying in mind. Keep to the facts. Keep coming back to the facts. And you'll find there's missing pieces between the facts. You've got to fill in those missing pieces. Right? Fill in those missing pieces and we'll have a better idea of what could have happened to Sebastian. Not saying we're going to find him. Not going to say we're going to wait. Oh my God, we've got the perfect. We our information. We told TBI found Sebastian. It's not going to be like that because we go on facts. We're not out there looking. Some are, some aren't. We can only give you the information that law enforcement give us, and go on by what the parents say. Right? And if those facts don't match up with what the parents are saying, then there's something not right there. And the facts we're getting do not match up with what KT and CP are saying. I'm not matching up. we just got to find those missing pieces. I hope to God law enforcement have got all those missing pieces. hope to God law enforcement are doing their job. And I wish everyone would back off all these YouTubers and let them talk about Sebastian without giving them grief every time they get up in the morning. They don't need it. Anyway, I'm going to say thank you for being here with me tonight. If you've liked what you've seen, please give this channel a like. It does help. It does help. And going out, being pushed out there. Get this video pushed out there. And I will see you all tomorrow night. As I said, I'll do some research on the de decom of a body and how long it has to, you know what I mean, that sort of thing. And I'll try and get that sorted out for tomorrow night. If not, I'll definitely have it by Wednesday, hopefully. Okay? And I'll also look into more landfill sites round that way. Because there's got to be more. But we know there's one in Galaxy. So that's a lot nearer than flipping Kentucky. 
So until then, thank you for being here, and I'll see you all tomorrow.